Hello everyone, this is a tutorial on how to open doors with a button. So, let's get started. Alright, so the first thing we're going to do is we want to open up our BP door that we have previously made because we have some changes in here we need to make. And if you are missing the BP door, then go back to the first video, which I will have linked in the description, where you can learn how to create what you see on the screen now. The items we will be deleting are these sequences and do onces right here. So now we need to drag all this stuff back over here and then hook up your begin overlap to play from start and then on component end overlap. This time, plug it straight into reverse instead of reverse from end. Plug it into reverse. Then come up here, compile, and save. And now we have one small little detail we still have to change. We have to change these functions out for our own custom functions. And to do that, highlight both of them, delete them, and then right-click and type in add custom event. And then on this top event, we want to name this open door and then do this one more time add custom event right here and then this time we want to name this one close door just like that and go ahead and hook these up to both of the casts just like so and then compile and save once again now you should notice we have some red errors that generated and it's complaining about these wild cards because as you see our closed door and open door no longer have the actor reference we had before so we have to create our own and to do this we're simply going to right click and type in get player character and what this essentially does is it's, it gets the first player character that's in the world and it casts it using this because this is the actor, and then we're casting to the first person character, essentially. So now just come down here, and copy and paste it, and plug this one as, in as well. And then compile and save once again, and your errors should disappear. Once you have everything hooked up and it's looking like this, next what we want to do is completely delete our collision right here. Because we do not need this no more. Since our collision is no longer being used. And that makes you compile and save again. And then you can completely close out of your BP door. Because we do not need it no more. So now it's probably a good idea to go ahead and play. And make sure everything still runs and the doors are appearing. There's no functionality on them. Because we just took the functionality out. However, we're about to add it where you can select a button from no matter how far away you are to open and close each door. So head back to your content browser and go ahead and right click, blueprint class, actor, and then do type in BP button. And this BP button actor is going to interact with our door with our open and close function to open and close the door like we had before so now go ahead and open up your button let me drag it on over and we are going to need two components in this button we are going to need a static mesh as well as a box collision and go ahead and name the box collision trigger and go ahead and name the static mesh button just like that compile and save and then come down here and click to assign your static mesh just like the door and type in cylinder just like that and again remember in the first episode i showed how to get your starter content so if you do not have the starting content, I highly suggest you go watch the first episode 
and it will walk you through everything up to this point in the video. So now go ahead and assign your mesh just like that. And then what we will need to do is scale this down a bit and rotate it. So go ahead and rotate it 90 degrees on the green axis. And then scale it down by pressing R. Smush it in a lot till it's flat just like that. And then get a nice angle on this. And scale it down length and height as well. Just like that. Next what we'll need to do is on the trigger scale this up pretty big as well so that the player has plenty of room to enter the trigger volume go ahead and compile and save once again then we're also going to need three variables for this which we can go ahead and assign two of them right now but the third one is going to be a little tricky to get so we'll just hold on a minute to assign that but the first variable we'll need is a boolean which means it's true or false so we will name this overlapping because this is the boolean that will determine if we're overlapping the trigger volume next we will need another variable and call this door and then go up here and there should be a variable type right here click this type in actor which is the same actors as everything else same thing but it's just inside a blueprint this time so go ahead and hit object reference and then compile and save once more and then slide on over here click instance editable and this will allow us to change what this variable is outside of the blueprint so we can have a lot more flexibility with this actor so now head over to your event graph and then like before delete all three of these because we do not need those whatsoever and just like we had set up before we're going to need to do our on overlaps for this trigger volume so go ahead and highlight it and then add event collision begin overlap highlight it again add event collision end overlap and then drag off of other actor and do your cast to first person character just like that and then copy paste and drag these over and connect them just like so so now since these are our if statements this is where we are going to be detecting that the actual player character has overlap so this is where we are going to be setting this overlapping to true or false so go ahead and click it drag it in and do set overlapping drag it up to your begin overlap control c to copy it control v to paste and then connect the two executable pins up just like so but on our begin overlap we want to set this variable to true because we are overlapping the trigger volume. Next, this little detail is allows us to actually have input whenever we overlap with the trigger volume. And it's just like the get player character, except this time you have to do get player controller which the player controller controls the player character and what this is basically doing is allowing the it's getting the player controller that is currently being controlled on the player so then drag off of this and do enable input which enables input for the player controller and then drag control click hold and drag it down to where it says player controller instead and then connect your executable pin up just like so and then come back down here drag and type in disable input just like so drag it off your target plug in the executable and now this part is all set up so now we can do compile save and now we can move on to the actual input event when we press a button 
So now, depending on what key you want to use to be able to open your door, this will be a little different depending on which key. So just right click and type in keyboard. And then there's a list of all the keys on the keyboard right here that you can choose from. For this tutorial, we're going to be using the E key, but you can use whatever key you would like. It doesn't matter. So now go ahead and drag in your overlapping variable that we're setting up there. And then hold down B. And then left click. And it will add in a branch. Or you can simply type in branch just like that. And then connect your overlapping up to the branch just like that. And connect the executable to the branch just like so. Now what this is doing is this is determining the value of the overlapping, overlapping and spitting it out in the true or the false direction, whichever way the variable is assigned. Alright, so the next thing we need to do is come down here, get our door, drag it in, and do get door, and we need to drag off of this, and this is a very weird node. But type in is valid. And you probably will not even understand what this is at all. But basically it checks if door actually has a value assigned to it. So right now it's none. Which is fine. We're not setting it here. But this just checks and verifies that door has a value. It will make much more sense in a moment. So next, what you want to do is drag in another door and do get door. And then off of this door, type in cast to bp underscore door, just like so. And what this is doing is just like our player cast, we're casting this value to the actual door. Because this is an actor, but now we're casting it to the actual blueprint and so now we can access all the variables and functions it pertains. This is also where the third variable will come in because we need to hold this value. So you need to right click on the little pin right here and then select promote to variable and you should be able to name it right down here and just simply name this casted door because this is our valid door after we cast it. So this is the door we can access all the functions and variables off of. Next, what we want to do is drag off of this and do a flip-flop. Which what this essentially does is each time it executes, it will flip back and forth between A and B. So the first time it runs through here, it will be A. Second time, it will be B. Third time, it will be A fourth B you get the point it just flips back and forth each time and as you could probably guess this is where we're going to drag in our casted door and we're going to get casted door and this is where we're going to call our two functions we made in our door so drag off of this and say open door this is our function we made and then drag off again and say close door this is that other function we made that uses the content we made in the first video. So then go ahead and hook these up to A and B, just like so. So then it'll flip back and forth each time we hit the button, and it'll open the door or close the door. So now go ahead and go up here, compile, save, and head back to your main viewport. And now what you want to do is fly somewhere it doesn't really matter but just drag in a bp button you can have multiple of these it doesn't matter and it doesn't matter where you place them you can make it nice and neat if you want to but for the purpose of the video i'm just placing it wherever so now if we navigate over here to our details panel see how this says none so we need to assign this a door value one of these doors that are currently in here. You see? 
So go ahead and go down here. This is our door value. We made it where it was instance editable. So click it. And then you have door, door 2, door 3. So just choose one of them. Whichever one you have. And we don't have to compile or save anything for this. And so now if we go ahead and run this. And we walk over here to our button. You get up and close to it make sure you're overlapping and you press e the door will open you press e again and the door will close you press e door will open press e door will close and if you do it fast you can sit here and just open and close it just like so just like that but yeah that was the door tutorial if you liked it leave a like if you learned something and want to see more videos like this one then consider subscribing and other than that i will see you all later bye